the interest in making the rise of the occult the first project of my full-time work at slaying dragons press was sparked by several things the last chapter in slaying dragons focused on the occult the rise of the occult the spread the problems that exorcists were seeing as a result of it also people began asking me for help and ideas because their kids were going into the occult even from catholic families Exorcists were repeatedly sounding the alarm about the occult. This was told to me personally. I got to listen to exorcists speak about it and also made the news. There's also a clear presence of occult practice and philosophies throughout the world, but also among Catholics and even priests and bishops in some very alarming and disturbing stories. So first, what is meant by the occult? So in my book, I cover the occult, uh, cover within the occult a variety of things. Uh, Reiki, Satanism, black magic like voodoo and Santeria, Santa Muerte. And some of these will be covered in the forthcoming book, God willing, Slaying Dragons 3. I don't have the title exactly worked out. Also Wicca and so-called white magic, uh, Ouija boards and similar things like Charlie Charlie, tarot cards, astrology, crystals, different kinds of readings, including psychic readings, and then mediums, manifesting, divination, sage smudging and other indigenous rituals that are on the rise now and then yoga which is very controversial of course but is clearly an opening to the occult as i found in my research um, alistair crawley used it witches use it occultists start with it and then progress in their occultism as a result of yoga and then there's the whole question and conversation about christian yoga and including kundalini and other things which is very problematic and very dangerous but that is for another time so some general statistics about the occult, about the rise of the occult throughout the culture. Uh, first, you know, it's a very widespread now, all too common experience for youth, middle school, high school, to uh, play with Ouija boards when they're hanging out, levitation games, uh, Bloody Mary games, seances, even spells. In addition to this is statistics that show religious uh, devotion among Christians is dropping at the same time as occult curiosity and interest in practice is rising. A lot of Catholic people on YouTube, a lot of Catholic podcasters and influences have several hundred thousand subscribers, and these are the very prominent ones. But at the same time, occultists, witches in particular, on YouTube have several hundred thousand subscribers with very engaged uh, audiences, as is evident in the comment section of the videos. Exorcists are overwhelmed, they've stated it, by people fleeing the occult and seeking them out for help. Most priests, as exorcists and former occultists have said, are unequipped to handle the issues that people leaving the occult are bringing. They just don't know what to do, or they're afraid, which we'll talk about later. Uh, there's also widespread paganism and the occult in the open. I've heard a lot of reports from people who have reached out to me to share things they've seen, uh, but both former occultists and exorcists have said the same thing. If you look at popular bookstores, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, you can find books and items for the occult on meditation, chakras, crystals, tarot cards, palm reading, witchcraft, uh, the general art of the occult, astrology, even the black arts, black magic. You can buy tarot cards, crystals, sage bundles from these bookstores. Uh, so we're in a situation that is resembling the early church. This is something that both exorcists and former occultists were saying at the same time in my interviews. In the early church, magic and superstition and the occult were widespread, and Christianity was in the minority. One thing that the church benefited from then that we do not currently have now is it was the age of miracles, too. So God willing, that might return to help rescue the many fallen souls who are in danger of perdition today. At the same time all this is happening, something very concerning is happening. The traditional liturgy of the church, the traditional sacraments, and the Roman ritual, the sacramentals, are literally being attacked internally. And this is at the same time as former occultists are entering through the traditional Latin mass, the traditional sacramentals, and all the traditional devotions. So this is what the former occultists love the most. So this is a way to pull occultists away from the occult, but at the same time there's an internal attack on it. Further, at the same time, there's an awakening to spiritual warfare in many places within the church. And this is why I wrote Slaying Dragons. I was also ex experiencing my own awakening to what spiritual warfare was and the benefit. Also, for the most part, throughout the world and throughout the church, people, including priests and bishops, are un either unbelieving or afraid of issues related to the diabolical, 
and magic and even sacramentals and just what demons can do and what we need to do in the power of the state of grace. Um, so this is a very bad situation uh, internally in, inside the church today. Some more specific statistics that I lay out uh, primarily in The Rise of the Occult, though I touch on this in the last chapter of Slaying Dragons. In 2017, 62% of Americans um, stated that they held New Age beliefs. 62% of Americans, this was six years ago. These New Age beliefs included energy, uh, among other things, which is a widespread belief within the occult. Other things that it included were astrology, psychics, and um, the presence of spiritual enemy energy in inanimate objects. Uh, this is a similar statistic in France in 2021, four years later. It was 70%. In 2020, after the BLM movement emerged, uh, witches launched what was known as hashtag witches for BLM on TikTok. Within five days of this thing being launched, there were about 10 million views of that hashtag witches for BLM. And they were issuing uh, spells for protection of those who are being persecuted supposedly by the police and also hexes against the police and against those who were um, persecuting um, minorities so the witches believed um, in 2021 on tiktok again witch talk had 19 billion views in 2021 i just checked right before making this video in 2023 two years later it's 44 billion views Hashtag witch talk on TikTok. Um, some statistics for Wicca in particular, and Wicca is just one of thousands of forms of witchcraft. There's no unity in witchcraft. There's no unity inside Wicca. As I talk about um, a little bit in The Rise of the Occult, but especially in the forthcoming um, book. So Wicca, in, it was recognized as an official religion in 1986 in the United States. And at that point, there, in 2018, there were close to 1.5 million Wiccans in 2018. Three years later, 2021, one researcher estimated that that number was close to 2 million. Compare that to Presbyterians, and this makes the news a lot. I had this in Slaying Dragons. In 2017, one year before the Wiccans had 1.5 million years in 2018, Presbyterians in 2017 had 1.4 million, million. So they were almost tied around 2018. But Presbyterians in 2021 were at 1.2 million, and in 2023 they're at 1.1 million Presbyterians, whereas Wiccans have gone up to 2 million. So traditional mainstream Protestants are decreasing while Wicca, for example, is increasing. As I mentioned, uh, some witch YouTubers have 200,000 and 400,000 very engaged subscribers, and I listen to a few of those to get some insights for the rise of the occult. Um, occult literature is also on the rise, increasing more each year. Some of the statistics there, in uh, 2008, there were 326 books on Wicca in 2008. Eight years later, there were 1,512 books on Wicca, just Wicca. That's a dramatic increase. And you look at, if you look at the numbers each year, it's going up more each year, each year it increases by a more substantial uh, number than the previous year. And unfortunately, the count that I was using from a, a website uh, stopped counting at 2016, which is seven years ago. You can only imagine what it's like now. But listening to one of the witch YouTubers, who in my book I call Lola, she said, the number of resources available for people to learn how to become a witch is astounding, she said. There are uh, hundreds of practitioners on YouTube that you can learn from, she said. Also, Amazon, she called, is a, a fantastic resource with tens of thousands of occult books. She also said the witchcraft section in Amazon is huge and is growing every single month with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of books that cover everything from traditional European witchcraft to shamanism, among other things. She said everything you can think of, they have it. And that's from The Rise of the Occult. Uh, my um, just released book. So there are, if you look at bookstores now online, there are uncountable. I don't know the best way to count how many you have there, but just Google or not Google, go to all these bookstores online and just search for occult or witch or Satanism or spells and just see all the things that come up. 
Further in the culture, it has made the news a lot. There are satanic t-shirts and satanic children's books, both on Etsy and on Amazon. Some of the children's books released by Satanists teach kids how to summon demons um, with sigils. Uh, Monsignor Rossetti, a very outspoken exorcist, said that there's one diocese in the United States where it is estimated that there are more witch covens than there are diocesan institutions, institutional buildings like schools, churches, um, rectories, uh, different things like that. More witch covens than there are diocesan institutions. In, this was in 2022. Uh, one of the priests I interviewed, who I named Father Cyprian, he said there were 13 covens in his parish, um, in the parish boundaries where his church is. One thing that everybody should do, and I've mentioned this on social media before, is Google metaphysical supply stores, metaphysical supply stores. If you do that, go to Google Maps, put that in a Google Maps, and then hit search, and then zoom in to whatever area you are interested in. When I've given talks in different parts of the country, especially the eastern part of the country, um, I've looked these up before I go to those cities, and usually they're anywhere from 10 to 20 different occult shops. And you want to look for keywords and you want to check them too because sometimes they're labeled um, occult when they aren't. But most of the time it is accurate. You can just look at some of the pictures on the Google map, search results, and there it is. So if you look for metaphysical supply stores, but you can also look for yerberias, which is spelled with a Y, uh, brujerias, covens, um, cults. Sometimes these things aren't going to pop up like uh, Santeria, Palo, Voodoo, uh, Masonic Lodges would count. Church of Satan, things like that. But not all these things are going to pop up in the search results. But the things that do are disturbing. If you look at some of these big cities, the occult, which does pop up and is obvious and is set up as stores in downtown areas, it's spreading, it's growing, and it's, uh, it's present. And it's pulling children towards it out of curiosity. One of the priests I spoke to said he was amazed to realize that the occult was here in his small town. He, and he lived in a predominantly Catholic area of the country, and he was shocked that occultists were just coming to them, just seeking the church's help. And it's here. He thought it would be, you know, New York, Chicago, some of these big cities, San Francisco, where you would expect it. But no, it's in these small, small town America has occult problems. And if you look around, which I did for my research, you'll see witch markets, witch festivals. There are also online witch communities. And a lot of kids that I heard about from families I interviewed are being pulled into the occult and being kind of enslaved by it through these online witch communities. Um, also, in the forthcoming book, which will probably be Slaying Dragons 3, and I don't have the title yet, I have some chapters on spirit summoning apps. These apps you can download on your phone, which are un sadly very popular. I heard about this from an exorcist, and then one of the people I interviewed, one of the former occultists, he... He utilized this and it's used for ghost hunting, but not really. If you look at the reviews, people are using this like Ouija boards to summon spirits. And um, it's very dangerous, as some of the reviews mentioned. So that's in the forthcoming book. I'll talk more about that. Also spells. Etsy uh, used to be eBay and then Etsy became the big marketplace for the occult. And it's uh, controversial. They tried to shut it down. I talk about this in one of the chapters in the, the next book. But you can go there now on Etsy and buy all kinds of spells, even death spells. It's very out in the open. In 2016, uh, which I'll talk about in the next book, there was a, a haunted hotel in Pennsylvania that boasted of having the world's largest Ouija board on top of it on the roof. And there are all kinds of uh, diabolical theatrics inside the building as a result. But these people were intentionally dabbling in the diabolical and summoning demons. They thought it was funny. In 2019, a group in Salem, Massachusetts, built an even larger Ouija board. I think a, an 18-wheeler is able to park on top of it. It's on the ground, out in the field. It's the world's largest Ouija board. And I have not... It's called Ouijazilla. Ouijazilla. You can look it up. Um, Teen Vogue and other magazines are giving advice on the, super, the preternatural, like ghosts. What do you do if you have a ghost in your house? And their advice is bad. You know, they're, they're treating it like uh, signs that this is a demon... Uh, which an exorcist would say, that sounds like a demon. They're saying it's a ghost, and they're giving these superstitious ways to deal with it. So people who have no clue about what is really going on in the preternatural are getting advice from these paganized you know, magazines advising people, and it's only causing more problems. And these are the people that are going to, be going to be running to exorcists eventually. There was one Italian exorcist who has been a, an exorcist for over 30 years. He said in, in Italy that real satanic groups, not these... Uh, 
shock and awe political things, but real satan satanic groups are on the rise. And this used to be the exception, and that's very concerning to him. People need, need to be careful. Equally concerning that I also heard from exorcists is the in-your-face attitude of Satanists and witches and other forms of the occult is actually causing an alarm uh, for, for exorcists. They are worried about that, how in-your-face the occult is becoming. Even in the military, there's one story I heard where um, a priest had to reach out to an exorcist to say, well, what do I do? Because the altar that we're all sharing, all the different religions are sharing, was just used by a Satanist in a ritual. Can I use that for mass? So the exorcist had to consult the priest on what to do. In 2021, Monsignor Rossetti, as I mentioned already, he said, this is, uh, this is his quote, he said, the number of people practicing the occult is astounding. We just can't deal with all the people coming to us. So two things, there's a rise in practice and there's a rise in people flocking to the exorcist, which is a good thing, but they're overwhelmed because we don't have enough. My, the last count I heard for the United States was 120 in the whole country. We need, you know, 10 times that. So the occult is really everywhere. It's insidious and it snares the une unexpected and even the well-formed who are just not being careful. Um, exorcists say that all forms of diabolical activity are on the, on the rise. I talk about this in Slaying Dragons. The International Association for Exorcists in 2012 and 2016 said it was at the point of a pastoral emergency due to the rise in diabolical activity and the rise in people going into the occult. Pastoral emergency. This is from the International Association for Exorcists. Um, and as we know, the occult and the culture is everywhere. And former occultists and exorcists were saying the exact same thing. You see it in the music going back to the 60s. All ever since, it's only getting worse. You see it in, in beer, the names of beer, even beer glasses. Uh, different um, cultural you know, decorations such as that are incorporating occult symbols. Even food, some snacks. You know, people think it's a joke, like voodoo chips is something somebody told me about. But if you look at the bags, the symbolism is uh, like these um, voodoo dolls. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's subtle, but it's symbology. As Christian symbology goes away, occult symbology is emerging, and eventually curiosity and the real presence of demons in the world will cause a disaster in the curious. TV shows, I uh, heard about this constantly from former cultists, how the TV shows really you know, piqued their interest when they were young. Um, de depicting the devil, like the show Lucifer, Sabrina, Supernatural, these were mentioned. Um, also, as I'll talk about in the next book, um, different heretical Christian groups, including some heretical Catholic groups, are engaging in blessing abortion mills with rituals. And the rituals are occultic, like they incorporate sage and even sprinkling some kind of water. And there are different, you know, uh, so-called sacred waters in, in the occult, like moon water, for example. Uh, so this is, they're blessing abortion mills, the occult. And of course, the modern insane immoral culture with all the sexual depravity and embracing it and manifesting through it, this reflects an occult, an occult mentality. The occult is basically, all throughout the occult is the same thing. The practi practitioner believes that he or she is God or doesn't need God or has the power to shape his own life or her own life within her, within them. So I am God is an occultic mindset. And the current sexual depravity, moral depravity in the world is I define what humanity is. I define what reality is. I define what good and evil is. And this is satanic. It's Luciferian. It's occultic. And it's dangerous because it's spreading throughout the world and even sadly among those in leadership positions in the church. So we don't need to be, ultimately, Catholics and State of Grace don't need to be worried about this. We need to be aware of it, but it's the spiritual battle. It is worrisome in one sense, but not in another. If we're in a state of grace, the devil can't touch us. As long as we stay in a state of grace, the one thing we do need to be worried about is the ubiquity of the occult is a temptation for everybody. If we don't cling to Christ, we will drift away from him. So we do need to be worried also about the youth about those who are vulnerable, those who have gone astray, those who don't have a good faith, because the occult is very tempting to them. There's widespread apostasy in the church. There is widespread ignorance of the faith in the church and in the culture. Lots of people are isolated as a result of you know, the post-COVID era, the technological worship we're dealing with in this society. People are separated and they're going for community in the online world and they have no Christian religious 
foundation to ground them. So they will drift easily into destructive ideas and destructive practices. So it would appear that we are at the dawn of an occultic world, but too few people are aware of this, which is why I wrote The Rise of the Occult as the follow-up to Slaying Dragons as the first book for my full-time work with Slaying Dragons Press and the Slaying Dragons Apostolate. So soon, uh, soon we will have, um, we'll have to connect the hope we have that God will rescue us with a willingness to speak publicly about the need for all mankind to join the one church that Jesus Christ established for our salvation, to set aside the occult mentality that they've embraced, to set aside occult worship, even just self-worship, which is what most people are doing today. And we also need to join with to that hope that God will rescue us, the willingness to lay down our lives should the culture decline further into madness, as it has happened in the history of the church. So now is the time to rekindle the devotion that we may have let fade in the past. If we were once more zealous than we are now, we've grown weak, we've grown slack. And to pray and fast more and to tell more people about the power of Christ working in the world. Because he desires, as my book, The Rise of the Occult, talks about, he desires to save those who are lost, those who are deep in the occult. He can save them and he wants to. We just have to get these people to be willing to let him. God bless you.